Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Today we are here with Dr. André Mach uh, from the Polio Research Department uh, at the World Health Organization. André, thank you very much for being with us today. Maybe to start with for our audience, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do here in the polio team? Thank you very much, Oliver, for having me. I work at the Polio Research Department and what we do is we, we are trying to find new ways to help people in the field finish this eradication of poliovirus. We look for new vaccines, we look for new ways of administering the vaccines we have, we look for new devices to help them eradicate the last endemic poliovirus circulation zones. And one of the things that you are working on is uh, finding new uh, inactivated polio vaccine solutions or new IPV vaccines. Uh, for our audience, uh, how this vaccine functions and the importance of it, we've done another uh, expert video on that topic, so I would invite you to, to, to visit that uh, and, and, and view that. But Andre, if we have an IPV, and particularly for a disease that won't exist anymore, why, why do we need new IPV solutions. Indeed, we have an IPV. It's an excellent vaccine and it's been around for more than 50 years and it helped us in many ways get to a point where we are now. However, one problem with IPV is that the traditional IPV is produced from wild poliovirus. So the manufacturing facilities need to store and handle wild polioviruses to produce IPV. And we want to avoid that. We really want to limit the number of facilities and countries that handle wild poliovirus. Because if we want to eradicate the poliovirus, we don't want to have incidents when wild poliovirus escapes from facilities and can start outbreaks again. So when you say wild poliovirus, that uh, you basically need wild poliovirus to produce IPV currently. That's right. And, and that's not good. And so there are other ways to produce IPV that we are exploring. One is to use the Sabin virus, the same virus that is in the oral poliovirus vaccine. And this IPV is currently licensed in several countries, such as Japan or China. But they still need live poliovirus to use it. And so in, uh, when, when we eradicate polio and we withdraw OPV, even this way will not be perfect. It is better than using wild poliovirus, but it's something that we want to move away from entirely. And one way of doing it is using what is called a virus-like particles, which is a completely non-infectious manufacturing process when we simply use just a protein to create something that looks like IPV but does not have any genetic information in it. And so you could produce these VLPs or virus-like particles without having any live vaccine, uh, any live virus for its production. So in other words, you would use virus-like particles instead of wild poliovirus as the seed material to produce the, the, the vaccine from. Uh, meaning you don't need to stock wild poliovirus. Right, we, we would not need any poliovirus to produce this vaccine. It would basically be a production of a protein without any genetic material. A protein that would look like the virus and that would, when given to a, to a body, that would induce immune reaction, but the production of the vaccine would be completely safe and there would be no requirements for containment. Now, does this have benefits also for uh, potentially producing IPV in developing countries at that point? We would first have to find a process that would be simple enough to be able to replicate elsewhere. We would then perhaps support what we call the transfer of technology to other uh, facilities that could produce uh, such a vaccine. This is something that we are working on, but it is something that will still take some time uh, before we have this vaccine on the market. That's very interesting. Uh, cost is obviously a factor. IPV costs significantly more than OPV. Could these new processes for manufacturing IPV 
uh, reduce the cost? And do you work with other partners in, 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 in producing these solutions? Certainly, cost is a factor. Even though today we can produce IPV, the traditional IPV from wild polyviruses for about one dollar per dose. So the cost has gone down significantly and is not such a big factor. It's more the availability and, again, the safety of production. We work with many other partners and uh, obviously the Polio Eradication Initiative is a partnership and I would like to point out uh, the research coordination and cooperation we have with the Gates Foundation, of course Rotary, UNICEF, CDC and Gavi and others that are all contributing uh, to these uh, initiatives. Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned the cost. Another way of uh, saving the cost and also saving the scarce supply of IPV that we have now is using uh, what we call a fractional dose, which is one-fifth of a dose of IPV, which we can uh, administer intradermally and have practically the same uh, immune response as to the full dose. So that's another thing that we have been quite extensively researching and today uh, we can recommend using the fractional dose to uh, countries that are willing to do so and many indeed have adopted this approach. So it's essentially a fifth of the, uh, of the cost of, of a regular IPV dose? For one dose, however, we recommend that instead of using one full dose, the countries use two fractional doses. So we can say the saving is about 60%. And of course, the supply goes a lot further because you're using much less of the of, of the dosage. Is that correct? Of course, and, and, and in this moment, the supply is more of an important factor than the cost. The cost being one dollar for one full dose is, is is not such an important factor. Mm. Fascinating. So it's all about getting uh, the best vaccine to as many children as we uh, as we possibly can, and actually. Uh, preparing for the post uh, post eradication world. To me, it's fascinating the work that you do. That you are essentially producing or will produce entirely new vaccines for a disease that will not exist anymore. But it makes sense the reasons why you are you are having to do that. We are helping others uh, produce. We are helping others develop these products, and we hope that they will be on the market and available during the post-certification period. And one other thing perhaps that I could mention are, are patches with vaccines, with microneedles that would be easily applicable, just a small patch containing the vaccine, it's another area that we work on, uh, that would replace the need to use needles and syringes and would be easily applicable in both campaign settings as well as routine immunization mm -hmm. settings. And again, we hope that within several years we will have a product available for use in the program. And could that be the same, same process? Could that be manufactured from new seed strain materials? Sure, it could be uh, either traditional IPV or the saving IPV or perhaps in further future the virus-like particle IPV as well. Okay. Andre, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us uh, today. It was it was fascinating, and I think gave a lot of insight into why new IPV solutions are necessary uh, for the post polio world. Um, and thank you for watching. And uh, uh, please join us again next time for another edition of uh, Coffee with Polio Experts. Thank you. Thanks for having me.